Hi there guys and welcome to the Tips for Lawyers podcast, episode number four. Before we get into it today, I just had a couple of administrative things I wanted to deal with. The first is I wanted to say thank you very much. Uh, Thank you to those of you who have left ratings, who've left comments, uh, who've sent me emails and who've left some written reviews on iTunes. I really appreciate those. Those have helped us get into the new and noteworthy section uh, for business and careers a couple of times there for iTunes. I have no idea how that works, but I do know that ratings and reviews help, and I really appreciate those of you who's taken a few minutes out of your day to leave a review. If you are enjoying the podcasts and uh, you want to help me out a little bit, I would really appreciate you going to iTunes and leaving a review or a rating. You can find the link in the show notes, which for this episode, as for every episode, you can find at tipsforlawyers.com slash episode 004. And there'll be a link there you can follow if you want to subscribe using another method. I'll also put the feed link there as well, as well as a summary of what we talk about today and any material things that I think uh, might help you out if you're still reading a little bit more into the subject. The second thing that you might or might not notice, depending on how you're listening, is I have gotten a new microphone. Now, for those of you who are subscribed to the website, I kind of mentioned this in my newsletter because I like do like getting new toys. So, uh, New microphone has been gotten. I didn't spend a fortune on it, I admit. I have no recording studio, so there didn't seem to be too much point in doing that. But hopefully the sound is a little bit clearer, sounds a little bit more human. I have had to tweak a couple of the audios there because there was just a little bit too much background noise. So I'm hoping that this one comes through a bit clearer and there isn't as much background noise that I need to tinker with in post-production. So this should hopefully be closer to my actual voice. Whether that's a good thing or not, I'll leave up to you guys to decide, but it does let me hopefully spend a little bit less time stuffing around with the podcast after I've actually recorded it, which means I can get more podcasts done, which means you guys uh, have the great pleasure, I'm sure, of listening to me more often if you happen to be subscribing or if you find the particular topic interesting. Which leads right into today's topic, which I think is a really interesting one. It's not one I've really dealt with before on the website or, for that matter, in any real detail. And it's about firm culture, that is law firm culture. Now, this topic actually came out of a question on the website, and the question in particular related to a person who had been applying for jobs here and there, had been invited to a fair number of interviews, and they hadn't been able to actually secure a position. And for whatever reason, they were told when they were getting feedback that they weren't a good fit for the firm culture. Now, I gave a bit of a vague answer to that on the website. It's a fairly complicated and nebulous topic, I admit, and it's one that I wanted to have a talk about today. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going to talk about what I think firm culture is. That is, what is it people are talking about when they are talking about firm culture? After that, we're going to have a talk about why firm culture isn't always the culture of the entire firm. There are some exceptions to that rule, and the words firm culture can create a bit of a misconception in some people's minds. I'm going to give you three examples of different culture types that I think exist out there that are common in law firms in particular. And finally, we're going to deal with the question at hand, which is, what do I think prospective employers are saying when they say you don't align With the firm culture. So let's get into it. First question, what is firm culture? Really good question and to really look at what firm culture is we need to look at the definitions. We are lawyers after all so what is culture? Now I just grabbed this uh, random definition off the internet. I thought it was pretty good. I found one that fit in with what I want to say obviously because that's how we do things but uh, culture, you know, what do you think about with culture? Uh, Do you think about cultural festivals? Do you think about, when you think about culture, do you think about multiculturalism? Do you think about maybe other countries in terms of culture? Because culture is a broader concept, of course. We often think about it in terms of other things. But my definition that I'm going to go with today uh, is culture is the ideas, customs, and social behavior of a particular people or society. Now, obviously, in this particular case, when we're talking about a people or society, we are in fact talking about a law firm. So picture a law firm as a culture in its own right, and that should allow you to get the best idea of what it is we're actually talking about. 
And again, it's the ideas, customs, and social behavior. So remember those things as we have a talk about our firm examples and as we have a talk through the rest of this particular podcast. Now, we need to go and apply that to law firms. And we'll do that in a bit more detail when we get into the examples. But really what we're talking about is how are the people in the law firm interacting with each other? Is it an open environment? Is it a closed environment? Is it friendly? Is it happy? Is it laughing? Is it casual? Is it hard working? There are plenty of options to do with the ways in which people interact with each other in law firms. And each firm as well has its own idea about things like working hours. They have their own ideas about what you do when you get to work. Is it okay with an 8.30 start time to get there at 8.30 and then make yourself a cup of coffee? Little things like this. These are the societal norms within a particular firm. You know, do you use your mobile in the office or do you not? All sorts of things that make people aware of what others are doing if they break these particular rules. And often they're unspoken, so it can be really hard to identify exactly what firm culture is and what we're talking about. Before I get onto my examples, though, I did want to raise a specific issue, as I mentioned, which is why firm culture is not always applicable to the entire firm. Now, we talk about firm culture, but as I said, we're really talking about group culture and societal culture. So, there are within a firm of any given size likely to be a number of different cultures in different groups. So, the firm I work at has about 250 people in it, give or take, and within that, of course, there are a number of different practice areas and there are a number of different groups, and they all react differently to each other. They all have slightly different standard hours that they work. We all have different ways in which we deal with particular matters. We open files. We engage with each other. We have team meetings. Now, in a bigger picture sense, there's a lot of similarities there. But within each particular work group, there are also differences. Now, my view on this is that it is really leadership based. Often, you will find that culture within a law firm and with any organization for that matter, comes down from the top. So if the leaders of the firm, that's usually the partners of course, interact with their teams and their people in a particular way, that's going to have a really big influence in how those people interact with each other and how as time goes on you will interact with a subordinate or a lower level lawyer or a clerk or a secretary. You will take those cues more often than not from the way the partners interact. If the partners close their doors all the time, Often everyone else does as well. If the partners have an open door policy, often everyone else does as well. It's not a rule. There are some people who don't behave the same as the partners, but often the culture of the group is really heavily influenced by the way in which the leaders in the group are behaving. So if you want the best idea of what a particular group within a particular firm is going to look like, you need to make sure you have a good understanding of what the leaders in that group are like and more specifically how they interact with people how do they go about leading the group because that's going to create your biggest indication of what the culture in that particular group is going to be like this is why when you have a job interview if you've just had it with the HR manager or you've just had it with one out of two of the partners in a particular group it's a really good idea if you can and I know the option isn't always there but it's a great idea if you can to be able to meet the other partner in the group and to ensure that you have a good idea of the characteristics and the leadership qualities of both of them, not just one half. Because you might find yourself in for a bit of a surprise if you get in there and you start working and all of a sudden you're working for this other partner and they're very, very different to the partner that you met in the interview. So you need to be aware that there are those differences and they often come from a top-down kind of style of leadership. So let's get on to our examples. The three examples I wanted to give today are common examples. They really cover the field in terms of what sort of firm culture you're going to have. But to me, they are probably indicative of the most likely characteristics and cultures that you're going to find within firms. First example, what I'm going to call the workaholic culture. Now, uh, I've given it a bit of a negative label. It's not intended to be necessarily, not necessarily my cup of tea, this particular culture, but this is a firm where everything is about the work. So this is a firm where you're going to have fairly rigid rules, probably, about start times uh, and finish times. But in addition to that, what you are going to have is a culture of achievement and probably a culture of competition. 
Often workaholic cultures are self-perpetuating in the sense that the new person comes in, perhaps expecting to work a fairly standard week, and all of a sudden they find that everyone around them is working an extra half hour a day. And so they gradually extend their day, they creep up, and they get in the habits that the people around them are as well. So the workaholic culture is often one where people are there trying to demonstrate that they are able to diligently perform their jobs. They are people who are working generally long hours, but they also work hard when they're in the office. There is a constant state of productivity. And as often as not, there is probably not a lot of scope for idle chit chat, certainly not a lot of scope for, you know, the frequent trips out for coffees or whatever. That's not always the case, of course. Every firm has its own situations, but it is a firm that is constantly and necessarily devoted to working hard and being productive at all times of the day. Often you will find the days get longer, the lawyers work longer hours than they might at other firms. But at the same time, because of this, of course, these firms can be quite profitable. So they often pay well uh, because they expect a lot from their staff and they're compensated accordingly. So it's not all negative. You don't just work hard and not get compensated. You're often paid very well at these firms that have high expectations of their staff in terms of hours and productivity. Because it's a high stress environment, however, you can find sometimes that people uh, can be a little bit difficult to approach. You might find that there's a lot more closed doors than open doors because more is always done when you're not interrupted on a constant basis. But Again, the firms might have rules about mentoring or traineeship or anything like that, and they might assist you if you're a younger lawyer to really come up to speed. But you need to be prepared to work hard at such a firm, and you need to be prepared that that is simply the expectation. If you work 12 hours a day and everyone else is working 12 hours a day, don't necessarily expect a pat on the back at the end of the day because you're just doing what is expected. You're not exceeding what is expected because they know that the expectations are placed high in the first place. So that's the workaholic culture, at least that's it so far as I see it. Not necessarily a bad culture if you've got the right mindset, but it can be a bit of a battle if it's different to what you're expecting when you got in there. Second type of culture in firms, and I think probably these days this one's more prevalent than the other two, and I'm going to call this the work hard, play hard culture. So These are firms where you get in, you work hard, you do a good day's work. It's not necessarily, you know, a 70 or 80 hour week like you might find at the workaholic firm, but you will work a good week and you will be expected to be productive and hardworking during the time that you're there. However, the flip side of this is that these firms have a tendency to have firm functions. They might have firm drinks on a Friday and they reward their staff with these uh, activities or social events or entertainment or various other things that allow the staff to relax at the end of the day, spend a bit of time together in a casual way, and generally they are trying to build the team in that outside work context. So these are firms where you're probably going to have a fair number of social functions. Uh, Sometimes firms, in fact, have more social functions than people would like them to have. Uh, Some people just want to go home. But There can sometimes be then this expectation with firms that have a lot of these social functions in the play hard side of this equation that you do attend them. And if you're a constant non-attendee, you might start to get a few glances, you might start to get a few comments from time to time that you're not participating in the firm culture. Now, that's because the firm is placing value on these things that they are giving back to you, even though your desire might be to go home to your family, sometimes Uh, You might need to just say yes to that invite, even though you're not necessarily wanting to go. They're usually not a bad time. I mean, you can go and put in an appearance and have a bit of a good time and then go home. Uh, I mean, obviously, they're designed to allow you to have some fun. But there is sometimes this unspoken expectation, even though they are theoretically optional. If you don't go to any event that the firm is putting on, then you might be seen as someone who's not participating properly. So in the work hard, play hard culture, you are, of course, going to be paid reasonably well. The firm is generally fairly profitable because if they're not, they're not putting on these functions. So they are firms who like to reward their staff with these extracurricular activities that might allow people to enjoy themselves outside the context of work. The final firm, and look, it's less common these days, but they do still exist. You'll just have to believe me if you've never seen one. And I'm going to call this the lifestyle culture. 
So the lifestyle culture firm is a firm and often it's come out of a firm that might have been a workaholic culture or one of the other ones I've spoken about. This is a firm where the leadership and the partners have made a deliberate and conscious decision to ensure that their staff are not working excessive hours, are not spending too much time at work and are able to go home at the end of the day and spend time with their families. So sometimes these will be smaller suburban firms, sometimes these, like I said, will be boutique firms that have come from partners out of larger firms where they got sick of the really long weeks and the really high stress, and they have made this conscious decision to allow their people and themselves the opportunity to go home because they value that extra uh, time at home with their own families and they appreciate that you have other commitments as well. Now, The downside of this is that a firm, of course, where the staff are less productive and less profitable as a general rule, will not necessarily have the available income that the other styles of firm may have to offer significant salaries or to offer significant benefits. So you need to be aware, of course, that there is a trade-off, and that's to be expected. There's a trade-off for not working the longer hours and not putting in the really high-pressure productivity and that trade-off is probably going to be in the form of money. That said, the lifestyle firm is often a more relaxed place to work, uh, and it often has a lot more flexibility. Because these are frequently smaller firms, decision-making can be faster, and people can access things more easily because there's sometimes less bureaucracy to get through in the smaller lifestyle firm. So those are my three examples of the different kinds of firm, and hopefully they've given you a bit of a, a broad smattering of what there is out there in terms of the different kinds of firm. If you're still hunting or if you're stuck in one particular culture, you'll just have to believe me at this point. uh, There are other things out there. I'm not going to tell you the grass is greener. It's just a different type of grass. So if you are looking around, be mindful of the different kinds of culture and see what you can pick up from the leaders. And this comes to the last topic of the day and the question that sparked this particular podcast, which is, What are prospective employers really saying when they tell you that you don't align with the firm culture? And look, this can come up not just in the context of job interviews, this can come up in the context of performance management or performance appraisals as well. And what are they saying? So let's go back to our example, uh, uh, sorry, our definition. Let's go back to our definition, which is culture is the ideas, customs, and social behavior of a particular people or society. So if you are attending interviews or are being uh, appraised and the suggestion is that you are not aligned with the firm culture in some way or not compatible with the firm culture, then have a look at those particular things. What are the ideas that the firm has? What are its concepts that it is based around? It is a hard work firm. Have you expressed a family commitment or, you know, have you said something like family comes first and you're in a firm where you're expected to work 80 hours a week? Obviously, those two things are not going to mesh. What about the customs of the firm? What hours do they keep and what hours do you keep? Have you had any discussions about those kinds of things? Does the firm have a monthly drinks that they expect people to come to? And have you expressed something that might be counter to that? Uh, So in firms, for example, I mean, lawyers drink um, as a rule. Uh, Not all lawyers drink, but for whatever reason, lawyers have developed a reputation as being a body of professionals who don't mind a drink now and then. So if you happen to be a teetotaler, there's nothing particularly wrong with that, obviously, but you need to be aware that if you express that view in the interview, and this is a firm that places a high value on attending social functions, and in their mind, social functions always involve drinking, then they might view that as you being someone who's not going to participate in that particular culture. So be aware of what you're saying in the interview and how it might impact upon the various customs that the firm has if you know what they are. If you don't know what they are, then just be cautious about what you're saying. Now, the last thing is the social behavior of a firm. And what we're really talking about here is how do people interact with each other? Do people wear ties? Are people casual? Are people particularly formal? And how do you speak? How are you presenting in your interview? Are you speaking to people in a very formal and rigid manner? Are you relaxed? Are you confident? Are you shy? Are you particularly confident to the point of perhaps coming across as arrogant? Or are you particularly shy, perhaps to the point of coming across as timid? These, at the end of the day, impact upon the way 
that the people interviewing you will think that you are going to interact with your partners and your colleagues within the firm. So you need to be aware how your behavior and your speech patterns and the way you sit and the way you interact with people, they are all being analyzed, whether deliberately or otherwise, they are all being analyzed by the people on the other side of the table. And if they don't get the good sense that you are interacting with them in a way that other people in the firm interact with them, and that is essentially the societal norm of the firm or the group that you're interviewing for, then they are going to have their doubts about whether you are going to be a good fit for that group. So be aware of how you are speaking, how you're sitting, how you're talking, what language you are using, and the behavior you are expressing when you're in your interview. I know a lot of people have interview coaching and these nonverbal cues and things like that. I'm not going to get into all that psychological stuff today, but you just need to be mindful of it, not to the point of being nervous, but have a look at how they are interacting with you. If the way they're talking to you is very different to the way you're talking to them, then there might be a mismatch in terms of culture, when in particular in terms of social behavior component of culture. The final thing, though, that really needs to be said is that sometimes you're not a fit for the culture is really just a euphemism for we didn't like you and we don't just want to say that out loud because it's kind of mean and we thought we'd just mention the culture. It, It can just be a nicety. They might have had a specific issue. It might not be a politically correct issue, so it might be something that they can't say out loud. I'm not suggesting this is the case on all occasions, but sometimes I do get the real sense that you're not a fit for culture is probably just an excuse. I suspect a lot of people get it, and it's not necessarily something you should take personally, but it probably means that you're not uh, hitting it off, for lack of a better word, that you haven't hit it off with the HR people or the people on the other side of the interview. Now, if you're getting this comment time and time again with different firms, have a look at the types of firms that you are applying to. Are they all the same category of firm? Are they all the same size? Are they all the same groups? Are they all the same expectations? Because it may be, in reality, that you are not a match for that particular type of firm culture. Maybe you need to be looking for a firm with a different culture. Maybe it needs to be a different size. Maybe it needs to be a different work type. Maybe it needs to have different hours. If you're getting rebuffed on the basis of culture on more than a few occasions, then perhaps you need to change up the type of firm you're applying to. However, there is a possibility that you're just not interviewing well, and unfortunately there's a limit to what I can do for you there. It is potentially a problem. I know interviews are nerve-wracking and a lot of people don't come across as well as they would like in an interview process because, frankly, it's intimidating, it makes you nervous, you're generally not on top of everything unless you're a particularly relaxed and confident person. So just be aware If that's happening a few times, maybe you need to go and have a mock interview with someone. Have someone that you trust who's in the profession come and interview you and give you some honest feedback about what it is that you might be able to do better. The difficulty is, of course, if you're really self-conscious when you go into an interview, that is going to create issues. So all I can say is be authentic. Try and find firms that will align with the kind of expectations that you have for a firm if you can figure that out beforehand. And if not, take your read from the people on the other end of the table as to how they're talking and how they're interacting and try and match that if it's at all going to allow you to be authentic in doing so. At the end of the day, authenticity is the key. You can't pretend your way into a law firm. You're just going to get fired during the probation if you pretend and frankly, it'll reflect badly on you going forward. So remain authentic, remain yourself and try and find firms that to apply to that are going to give you the kind of interaction uh, that aligns with your personal values and characteristics. That's all I had today. I hope it's been helpful in terms of learning a bit more about firm culture and interviewing, and I will see you next time.